think that something so simple that we do every day to live would be simple for singing. And yet somehow it turns into this elusive conversation about what is support and how do I find my support? And I don't think I have enough support. The way I think about support is I think about support coming into my lower back. Strange idea, I know, since our lungs do not go to our lower back. But it's a concept that in the inhale, the air comes in easily to the body and then it doesn't get held into the body. It comes in and then in the act of singing, it just naturally comes out. If you think about the way you speak, we inhale in order to speak. We don't think about and then we start speaking on this long breath of air and we think about how we're going to speak and blah, blah, blah. We take actually organically and innately the amount of air that we need to say the phrase that we're intending to say. And I think so much of that translates into singing actually. It's just that sometimes we forget how much of an organic thing it is. One exercise I like to do for breathing is I like to count and I'll keep a any sort of a rhythm that I like and I'll count to maybe 12 and I'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then I'll inhale for about a count of four. And then I'll do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six. So then I go through that and I vary, as you can tell, not only maybe dynamic, but the pitch as well. Again, all those variations that keep you vocally healthy and malleable. And then the next time I inhale, I inhale on a count of three. So I'll go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then I inhale on a count of two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then I inhale on a count of one. And then on the last one, I do what I would call a catch breath. So I'll say eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And you'll realize that you can actually still do it, even though you've taken what you think is a lot less air than a count of four breath. And it helps to remind your brain that you don't need to tank up every time you're getting ready to sing, which I think is extremely healthy to have these different things in your wheelhouse. So what happens if you are in an opera or in a concert or wearing very uncomfortable high heel shoes and you need to sing and you are in a funny position or you're lying on the floor or your colleague is squeezing you within an inch of your life? In this case, I always think about instruments. Now, of course, yes, you take a clarinet out of its case and it's a fixed instrument, right? But you're not gonna twist and mold the clarinet and expect it to make the same sound, it won't. So as a singer, you think, okay, that's gonna be a little bit like me. I like to think about my shoulders and my chest and my abdomen and all these things, being able to stand up tall and sort of float as if my shoulders were a hanger and everything underneath gets to float rather in a relaxed way. I like to think of my abdomen and my legs and my hips and all the way down to my feet as being quite strong into the ground, as being the pillar in which the rest of the instrument can sort of float above. As much as I like to say this would be a posture that I would like to create for myself at all times when I sing, that's also not always possible. You have to move on stage, you have to interact with your colleagues, sometimes you're lying down on the ground. So. Then it, for me, it always boils down to the ultimate thing, which is your core, which is where your breathing comes from, your strength comes from, and actually your entire body's strength comes from the strength of your core. And now I can speak specifically to this because after having a baby, your core sort of shot, sort of gone. So you have to find it again and retrain it again and exercise and do things. A lot of sometimes teachers will tell you, don't do sit-ups, don't do crunches as a singer because it will affect your voice, it'll affect your throat. Well, if you do incorrectly, yes, any exercise done incorrectly will injure some other part of your body, if not the body part you're trying to exercise. You don't want to crunch your neck when you're doing crunches or sit-ups. You don't want to engage these neck muscles at all. It's about your core muscles. So doing any core exercises for me is actually a key thing as a part of my warm-up. I like to do planks, so you know like wall planks, if you put your hands, you could start by putting them on a wall, kick your feet out a little bit so you're at an angle, you can get a little more fancy and get to a chair, you can get even more fancy and get to the floor, those are really fun. Um, I quite like to do those, sometimes I get a low bench and I'll put my hands there, 
and I'll do what I call airplanes. So I put one arm out and then I bring them down. My students know all of this and they hate me for it. And I like to do my warm ups in those positions because what happens is your core is immediately engaged and it's becoming stronger as well as you're learning how to sing and keep your core engaged the whole time, which is an inner posture which helps with your projection, which helps keep you strong sort of throughout any kind of singing you have to do in any position that you are in. So if you lose your inner strength and your inner core strength, then you're messing with part of your singing mechanism. But you can be on the floor then lying down. And if you know what it feels like to have that core strength, you can do that lying down. You could do it bent over something. You could do it leaning back a little bit and you go playing around. And then if you're in a position on stage that's really uncomfortable, twisted and off to one side or something like that, then you have to ask the director if you could please change it. And what I tend to think about the entire time as I'm moving from one position to the next is as long as I haven't dropped that sense again of my core being strong and keeping my body engaged throughout whatever angle I'm in, then I'm fine. 